After more than a decade of being an entrepreneur, working with entrepreneurs, and now coaching entrepreneurs, I found there are three types of entrepreneurs. In today's episode, we'll explore all three types, discover which one you are, and how to get to be a type three entrepreneur, because that's what we all want to be. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. So typically when we work with um, entrepreneurs, you know, and these could be uh, people building an online, you know, platform that's uh, maybe, maybe they're coaches, maybe they're, maybe they're going to be, uh, maybe they've got courses to sell, maybe they've got physical products, doesn't matter really. What we find is that online business owners tend to be on one of two extremes. And, and I would say when, when you think about people who come to us for coaching, it's like 49% on one side and 49% on the other side. We very rarely find any type three entrepreneurs, which is where they're not on these two extremes. And I'll explain that in a moment, but very few people come to us for coaching uh, when they're when they're not having, you know, kind of one of these issues or the other. And that's why they come to us for coaching, of course. <laughs> so the first extreme is that they're profitable. So we find businesses that are profitable, they're making good money. They might even be made, they might be a seven figure business, even possibly, you know, a three, four, five million dollar a year business. But they hate their work. They're not living out their passion. So every day becomes what we call another mundane, money-driven mess. So both of these types of entrepreneurs end up burning out. This group of entrepreneurs, that we'll call them type one, they're, they're profitable, making good money even, but they don't enjoy their work. They're not living out their passion. They burn out because of monotony, because of lack of passion. They're not doing, like they just wake up every day and it's all about the money. On the other end of the spectrum, type two entrepreneurs, we find the folks, they love what they do. They wake up and they're excited. They're, they're creating content and they enjoy it. They love engaging on social media. They love doing coaching calls, whatever it is. They love writing blog posts, recording podcasts, doing Facebook lives. They're just not making any money. Maybe they are, maybe their business is, maybe they're running a half a million dollar a year business but they're also spending a half a million dollars or, you know, $480,000. They're only making $20,000 a year. They're working full time for like a fifth of minimum wage. These folks burn out because they're spending more money than they're bringing in. We see a lot of these people, they're starting out. they've, They've been doing this for a year and they're they're doing it part time but they're putting in 15 20 hours a week like this is a you know a half time job so let's call it 15 hours a week you know 750 hours 1000 hours a year that they're putting into this platform and over the last year they spent say $6000 that's the average we hear is about 500 bucks a month just under $500 so They spent $6,000 on their platform. They brought in $2,200. They lost (laughs) $3,800. They actually lost money. That's not a good place to be in. And even if they did, maybe they they only spent $2,000. But they brought in $2,200. So they, they brought in $200 and spent 750 hours. They made, uh, what's the math on that? Like 25, 30, so they made 30 cents an hour. <laughs> Not exactly, uh, you know, a good return, right? And so for me, you know, I was entrepreneur type number one. I... I've been both actually, but I'll, you know, going back to kind of the, the, the original, like going back to like 2010, I, 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 I was making good money. You know, I was bringing in on average, I was a solopreneur with a virtual assistant bringing on on average of 25 to $30,000 a month. So pretty good money. I was, 
I, I was pretty excited about that. But instead of waking up excited about what was what lied ahead each day, most of my days were pretty much the same. Any given Tuesday was just like the previous Thursday, which was like just like Friday, which was just like Wednesday mornings or just like afternoons. It was just, it was monotonous, but the money was good. The money was so stinking good. And like I said, about 48, 49% of the entrepreneurs we work with are just like this. Their business is profitable. Their products are selling. Their funnels are optimized. Their marketing is dialed in. But waking up in the morning is a struggle. Instead of passion and purpose, they wake up with dread. Instead of enthusiasm and energy and, and you know, like I'm, I'm recording this at 2.21 in the afternoon. I'm, I'm on, like I'm all systems go. Instead of that, they, they stumble through the afternoon bored. They stumble through the afternoon daydreaming of, of something different, something better, something more adventurous. Now, on the other end of the spectrum, and I've been there, you know, entrepreneur type number two, like the, the folks, you know, that they love what they do, but they aren't making any money. That that was me in the morning then. Those first couple of hours, right? When I was building this side hustle, my blog, like I was excited to sit down and write, excited to record another podcast episode or shoot another video but each day brought me no closer to my goal of, of providing a better life for my family. Like my, my kids, they could not eat my dream. They, they required money, which bought food. And the, you know, the mortgage company, uh, sadly and amazingly, they, they didn't take payment in the form of my podcast wisdom, right? Our bank didn't just magically add money to our bank account because I was excited about my work. That's not how the world works. Or I think, you know, Robbie, on our team, Robbie Miles, he's a productivity expert. Uh, today he works for us, which is awesome. But before that, he built a successful online platform. He's still there. You can go check him out at RobbieMiles.com. And I say successful because it did become successful, but not after years of the same struggle that I went through. He recorded a testimonial video and I actually went back and found it. Uh, I recorded a, testament, a testimonial video for us, but this is probably about two, a year and a half, two years before he came to work for us. And I'm quoting him here. He said, for the first for the t- two, first years, two years, I couldn't make a dime. My blog actually put me into debt for two years. And then as soon as I started taking Matt's pro- advice, um, I made $3,000 that first year. The next year, I more than tripled it and made nearly ten thousand uh, dollars, just with the advice that Matt gave me when it came to affiliate marketing and serving my audience. So he was loving what he was doing. He was passionate about his message, excited to create content to change the world. How long could a father? I think that time he had four kids. How long could a father of four, with a wife that he desperately wanted to allow to quit her job, keep this up? How long could he keep doing something he's passionate about? It's losing money. The answer is not very long. Now, Robbie's going to be the first to tell you. His wife was his biggest fan, just like mine. You know, we both actually have our, both of our wives are named Tara, which yes, that does get a little awkward sometimes. <laughs> it gets a little confusing. Occasionally he's like, yeah, so I was texting Tara last night. And I'm like, dude, why are you texting my wife? Like, <laughs> but <laughs> She was his biggest fan, right? But the internal pressure he felt to give up his dream w- was unbearable. And so he started following me. Things really started to change for him. And, you know, as he says, like when he started taking my advice, things started looking up, right? So he says there, he says, I, I more than tripled, you know, the next year I more than tripled it and made more than $10,000 just from the advice Mac gave me. $10,000 might not seem like a, a lot in the grand scheme of things. But this was while raising four kids, working full time as a teacher, serving as an uh, an executive officer in the Army National Guard, like and probably like twelve other things. Right? Robbie's always busy. Probably was building a house. Like that's not an exaggeration. He like completely remodeled his house. Like the first year he was working with us, it was crazy. He was like, "What'd you do this weekend?" I'm like, "Man, we went on a walk, and like I cleaned the kitchen." He was like, "I built the kitchen." <laughs> like, all right. It doesn't matter if you're making great money, if you hate your work or if you love your work, but you aren't making any money or worse, you're actually losing it, right? Regardless of which extreme the entrepreneurs fall into in the end, you give up, you quit. And the problem is that the world misses out on your message. 
So before we break those two types down and ultimately talk about the right kind of entrepreneurs, which are type three entrepreneurs, I want to give a quick shout out to Caribbean Girls F1234. That's a unique username. Um, <laughs> says, my gosh, I am so glad I found this podcast. If you've been thinking about starting an affiliate program for a while, but have, or I've been thinking about starting an affiliate program for a while, but I've always found it confusing. This podcast has been so insightful and offered so much help, to, so much information to help me get started. Highly recommend. I'm assuming it's a female, so I'll say she gave us five stars. Thank you, Caribbean Girls. F1234. Um, I would love to know your real name. So hit me up, shoot me an email, let me know that's you. Uh, but thank you so much for that rating review. So I just wanted to give you a quick shout out. And so I go back to my, you know, kind of my story here. Um, I was, I was thinking about this, thinking about recording this. I was thinking about the line from, uh, uh, Charles Dickens. It's called, the book is called the tale of two cities and it's the, the iconic lines, right? Where he says it was the it was best the of times. Best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epoch of belief. It was the epoch of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. We had everything before us. We had nothing before us. We were all going direct to heaven. We were all going direct the other way. That was my business in 2013. It was like this roller coaster of emotions in my business, right? So I'd wake up excited. I'm going to blog. I built my audience. Like I loved writing. I'd love sharing my message with the world. Problem was, I wasn't making any money from it. In fact, I was losing money. The cost of website hosting, the cost of my virtual assistant, WordPress plugins, podcast hosting, all the other fees that you get, like you got to pay, they cost more than I was bringing in each month. I didn't have a business. I had an expensive hobby. Now, just to be clear, there's nothing wrong with running an, uh, a hobby blog or running a hobby podcast or a hobby YouTube channel or whatever it is. Like, If you're passionate about a topic such as, you know, you're going to write about your favorite sports team, you're going to write about fitness or I don't know, like, you know, organic gardening or cooking. It, I mean, it doesn't matter. Whatever it is, you want to create content for the sake of creating content. That's fine. That's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I have nothing against the, the hobby bloggers or hobby podcasters, whatever. But hobby bloggers, hobby podcasters, hobby content creators, they don't wake up at 530 in the morning every single day to write like I was. Hobbyists don't they don't maintain a level of consistency. They don't maintain a level of effort. They write when they feel like it. They record like, oh, you know, I've got some time this afternoon. I'll record a podcast. I don't record a podcast when I feel like it. The calendar says I'm releasing podcasts on these days this month. I will record them in advance of that. Now, sometimes I'm recording this on a Tuesday afternoon and I'm batching a handful of podcasts. Sometimes it's because in my planner for the day, it says record the next four, po well, not the next four, but the next four on, on my list, record the next four podcasts. Here are the topics. Here are the ones that I'm recording. And so I'm doing it today. Hobby bloggers, hobby podcasters just do it when they feel like it. They, they do it when inspiration strikes. They, 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 they publish when it's convenient. I post to social media on a daily basis. Why? Because I do this for a living. You know, a hobbyist, if, if their kids get sick, if it's a holiday or they have a big day at work tomorrow, they skip a day. They're not running a business, so it's not a big deal. I mean, it's their, their, their content is not their business. That wasn't me, though. I told people I was a blogger. I told people I was a podcaster. I was a content creator. I told them that I had an online business. The problem was that was a lie. I didn't have a business at all. Businesses make money. And I wasn't. In fact, I did the math. My best guess, if you divided my total monthly revenue by my hours worked, I was making $1.25 an hour. That was before expenses. So I was making $1.25 an hour. And, you know, you can just extrapolate that to an eight-hour day. So I was making a whole, you know, whopping 10 bucks, 10, 11 bucks. I was spending about 15 to 20 bucks a day. I was losing money. 
I was making less per hour <laughs> revenue than waiters make before tips. Like, that's crazy. I, 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 as I said earlier, I love the work. I was passionate about my, my small audience. I got a thrill. I would write a blog post. Man, it was fun. I would record a podcast. It was fun. Like it still is today. Even doing the menial work, you know, like um, trying to figure out why this plugin wasn't working or updating or hosting. Like I, I, that was fun because I felt it was, it was doing, it was doing what I wanted to do, but I was ready to give up because I wasn't making any money. It was simply not sustainable for me to continue spending that much time, that much energy, that much money with nothing to show for it. I was sacrificing sleep. I was sacrificing time with my family. I was sacrificing my sanity. For what? Just to go deeper into the red? And just to go more into debt? And like I said, that was my morning. The rest of my day, starting about 9, 30, 10 a.m., was a complete opposite. So once I finished writing, recording, you know, shooting, I'd do some quick exercise, uh, eat breakfast, you know, get ready, shave and all that, get ready, say goodbye to my family. And I began to work my quote unquote real job, right? The one that paid the bills. I owned a consulting company, same name as we have today, Matt McWilliams Consulting Incorporated. Uh, we worked with small and, you know, and large businesses. I wouldn't say I hated the work necessarily, but it was, it wasn't something I was passionate about. Like I was good at it. I, I basically acted as a, you know, as a business development guy and I had all the connections in the industry. I was working in the insurance leads industry. I had all the connections. I was good at it when I wanted to be, but I always did the minimum required to accomplish the objective. Always, you know, it was always like, how do we hit our targets? But I wasn't going to do much more. And I made a crap ton of money. Like technically speaking, I made a crap ton. It was the tale of two entrepreneurs. I mean, day and night, the best and the worst to me. Part of the day I played the passionate starving artist and the other part I was like a mercenary who only cared about the money. And so typically, like I said, we see entrepreneurs on those two extremes. So which one describes you? Are you successful, you're profitable, but you're burned out because you're not living your passion? Or are you loving your work, but not making any money? You know, there's definitely a better way. Entrepreneur type number three. Um, like I said, about 98% probably of all the entrepreneurs we begin working with fall into one of the two extreme categories I've talked about. That's, that's reality, but there's a better way. Um, my friend and, and business coach, Michael Hyatt, calls it the double win. Now, he, he, he's using it in context of winning at both work and life. Meaning, you know, you can win in business and in your family and in your relationships. I'm going to use it to describe winning in terms of being passionate about your work and making a great income. When you build a business that you're passionate about and it makes you a bunch of money, you have the purpose that drives you every day. And you get to keep doing it for the long term. That's what entrepreneur type number three is. Now, does it mean that you spend literally 24-7 in your passion area, what Michael Hyatt would call the desire zone, things that you're both good at and proficient at? No. I've, I think I said this in a couple of episodes ago. There's 90 minutes a month or so where we have to reconcile our numbers for the month that is drudgery for me. We're not at the point as a business where we're willing to turn over our finances to, you know, to someone else. We don't need a full-time or even a really a part-time CFO yet. Um, my wife is the CFO and we go over the numbers together and that's drudgery for me. It's 90 minutes. We do it one evening a month and we get it over with things like, you know, following up with a potential client is, is not really drudgery, but it's definitely in my disinterest zone. I'm good at it. I still really enjoy doing it. Now, get me on the phone with them and I'm like, yeah, let me talk about our business. This is so fun. Okay, here's how we can help you as a coach. The, the following up part is <sighs> torture for me. 
That's why I don't do most of it. I let my assistant handle most of that. But occasionally I have to step in and do some of it. It doesn't mean that you're going to be living in your desire zone 100% of the time. It just means that you're spending the majority of your time living out your passion and purpose. So you get to wake up excited, do work you love that brings in enough money that you can keep doing it full time forever if you wanted to. Now, if that sounds like something you would want, come to my passion to profit path training. It's coming up, depending upon when you're listening to this, it's possibly next week. Uh, We've got time. We we do this about three times a year. So if you're listening to this way in the future, uh, it might be like two months from now. I don't know. But as I'm releasing this episode, it's coming up really soon. If you go to passiontoprofitpath.com, you can register for the training. And in the training, we're going to cover the 10 steps to go from passion to profit, right? Um, all of these begin with the letter C because I'm a marketer and that's a clever marketer's way of helping you remember them, right? <laughs> um, so we're going to help you t- t- discover those 10 steps and then execute those 10 steps to go from like, hey, I've got this idea, right? To I'm actually going to build a business around it. What we're teaching in this training, it's worked for me. It's exactly how I built a business that I'm passionate about and that's incredibly profitable. It's worked for our coaching clients. It's worked for our students. It's led to some amazing stories. Like I, I've seen people take what we're teaching and go from part-time in debt to running a successful, profitable, full-time business. I've, I've seen people go from like they had you know 26 people on their email list for two years. And then they grew it to thousands and thousands of people and more. I've seen people take what we're teaching. They've got the message. They've got the passion. And I've seen this work in every conceivable niche. Physical products, coaching, consulting, courses, you know, like bloggers, podcasters, YouTubers, doesn't matter. Every conceivable niche, I've seen these people take their story and turn it into a platform that reached the world. So you can check that out, passiontoprofitpath.com and register there. I want to see you on this training because it's going to be amazing. Now, before we go, I want to give you two exercises in one declaration. And before I I give you these, like one thing that you need to understand, it's important to actually do these exercises. So if you're driving, you're out on your lawnmower, uh, you're doing something where you can't do these exercises right now. Come back and do them later. Make a note real quick. Just set a calendar reminder real quick and come back and make sure you actually do these exercises. You probably, like, odds are nothing I've said today is just like overwhelmingly surprising you. We don't, you don't suffer from a lack of information. You suck, suffer from a lack of implementation. One of my favorite quotes of all time from, uh, it's from Johan, whatever, you, it's like Johan von Guth. I don't know how you pronounce it, German, maybe Austrian. Um, Johann Wolfgang von Geth, I think is actually how it's pronounced, said, knowing is not enough, we must apply. Willing is not enough, we must do. So if you don't actually do the exercises, you're going to implement nothing. You can have a head full of knowledge and no business, therefore no profit to actually show for it. You will be the smartest person in the room but you also be the brokest, unhappiest person. <laughs> also, I'm going to give you a declaration. Now, this is a verbal affirmation that you should make out loud. Like, I don't care if you think declarations are corny, lame, awkward. They are important. So if you're listening to this in a public place, I don't shout it out the moment you hear it, okay? Unless you want some weird looks and maybe you want to get like kicked out of the coffee shop. I don't know. Save the declaration for later, but don't just like make sure you come back to it. Okay. Now, I can't promise that making a declaration is going to make success like guaranteed. It's not, it will make it more likely though. Changing your mindset, changing your beliefs is just as important, if not more important, than giving you more knowledge or changing your tactics or changing your strategies. That's why, that's why I do this podcast. I want to give you the strategies and tactics, but I also want to change your mindset. So exercise number one is identify which entrepreneur type you are. Are you 
struggling financially, but loving your work, or you doing great financially, but hating your work. So identify that and write out maybe a few reasons why that is. Write out a few reasons why that is. Second exercise is I want you to take a few minutes to write out what a double win would look like for you. How many people are you impacting? What kind of income are you making? How big is your team? What exactly is your message? What exactly is your platform? How much money are you bringing in? And how much time are you spending, you know, truly doing the things that you're passionate about? And then lastly, a declaration for you, because belief is so important. And I want you to declare this. I can and I will do what I love and make a ton of money doing it. I can and I will do what I love and make a ton of money doing it. You can do that. You can have both. You can have the double win. And you will. So come join me on the Passion to Profit Path training. Just go to passiontoprofitpath.com. I'll see you on the training and I'll see you on the next episode where I'm going to share with you the surprising truth about leading your tribe. Leading people and leading a community, leading your, your tribe of followers probably isn't what you think. I'll see you then. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows, maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon.